Right this way, step on up. Try your hand, test your luck. It's time for our first conversion diversion. A chance to practice some of these uh, numeric form conversions uh, that we've talked about this lesson. Now we're not going to cover all of the different conversions. Uh, specifically, we're going to look at binary to decimal, binary to hexadecimal, and hexadecimal back into binary. These are ones that you could be able to do in your head. Uh, other types of conversions require a bit more of pen to paper or using a calculator. But by practicing these particular conversions, I think you'll get a better feel of how binary, decimal, and hexadecimal connect with each other. So I'm going to go through these practice problems or quiz questions rather quickly. Uh, you can try to keep up and guess what the answer is going to be in time with the video, or feel free to pause at any point if you need some more time. The first conversions we'll do are unsigned binary to decimal. And here's the first problem, 0011, try it yourself. The answer is 3. And how do we get that? Well, we just have these weights for a 4-bit binary number. Starting from the least significant bit, they go 1, 2, 4, 8. Again, those are just the whole powers of 2, 2 to the 0, 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, and 2 to the 3 power. The weights of 2 and 1 have a 1 connected with them, so they are added together. 2 plus 1 gives us 3. Next one. The answer here is 6. In this case, the two weights that have a 1 associated with them are 4 and 2. Add those together, you get decimal 6. And that one is 9. Here the weights are 8 plus 1 being added together to give us decimal 9. Here the answer is 12. 8 plus 4 are the two weights. And this is one that should become second nature to you after a little bit of practice. Uh, 1111, we'll be working with four bits quite a bit in this class, and when you see all ones, you should immediately think 15. Common mistake is to think it's 16, right? It's the biggest number with four bits. Well, you can count to 16 unique numbers with four bits, but you start at zero and you end at 15. 15 is that highest number. And this last one, the answer is 7. You could do 4 plus 2 plus 1, or there's a pattern you could take advantage of in both of these last two examples. Anytime all the least significant bits are 1, you can take 2 raised to the number of those bits. That would give you 8. You subtract that and you get our answer of 7. Over here, that would look like 2 raised to the 4 power, since there's 4 bits. Do that computation, you get 16, subtract 1 from that, and you get 15. Next page, same type of conversions, but we have longer binary numbers. Give this one a shot. The answer here is 33. Our procedure is the same, we just need to know the weights of each of these bits, and add those weights that have a 1 associated with it. Uh, we could get up to this 32 by starting at the least significant bit and multiplying by 2. So we go 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. Or you can count up the number of bits. There's 6 of those. And then you do 2 raised to the number of bits minus 1. So 2 raised to the 5th power gives you 32, which is the weight of that most significant bit. And then here we have a 32 and a 1 that are being added together for a total of 33. Next one. The answer here is 50. That would be 32 
plus 16 plus 2 gives you 50 and all the other weights have a zero associated with them. Next one. The answer here is 31 and this follows the pattern that we saw before where uh, we have all ones uh, at the end of the number so we do 2 raised to the number of ones which is 32. Not a coincidence that's the same number as uh, the bit weight to the left of all those ones and then we subtract 1 from that value to give you 31. Next one. This one takes a little longer because we have more bits. Right? We have to figure out what the weights are to capture uh, the full number. So in this case we go 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128 or, and we use 8 bits quite frequently, or you will soon learn that with 8 bits the highest weight or the weight of the most significant bit is 2 to the 7 power or 128. And it could get intimidating to try to add up all those numbers, but look at this. I can ignore everything in there. I know I have a 128 here, plus 2, plus 1. 128 plus 3 gives us 131. Next one. I would be really impressed if you could do this one in your head. Uh, some students might be able to. Uh, but most of us, we need a calculator or we at least need a pen and paper to be able to write this one out. But the procedure is the same. 128 plus 64 plus 16 plus 1 gives us 209. One other pattern I want to note here is any time a binary number ends in a 1, you get an odd result. And we see that in all of these examples except for this one here. There we end in a zero, which is why we get an even result. Okay, let's shift gears now. Let's go from binary to hexadecimal and try this first one. Well, this first one looks exactly like our decimal example. It's just shown. Um, hexadecimal and decimal look identical on numbers that are less than 10. So again, we just add these weights together. 2 plus 1 gives us in this case the answer is B. The way I normally do this in my head is I convert to decimal first and then I write the hexadecimal representation of those decimal digits. So the weights are 8 plus 2 plus 1 which gives us decimal 11 but that's not how we would write 11 in hexadecimal. Now 10 is how we write A, actually I should say that the other way, hex A is how we write decimal 10, which means 11 is written with a B. And this is one that should become second nature pretty soon. All ones we know that is decimal 15 which is going to be the largest possible hex digit, F. All right, this one looks tricky at first because there's a lot of numbers, but remember, all we have to do is split this into four bit chunks and convert those four bits separately from binary into hexadecimal. So the least significant four bits are 0011, which convert to hex 3, most significant 4 bits written over here, and that would convert to hex 8. And the result is 83. I'm careful to not call that 83. 83 would imply that I'm speaking in decimal, which would mean 8 tens and 3 ones. But we're talking about hexadecimal here, so this would mean 8 sixteens plus 3 ones, which is a different number than decimal 83. And the result here is 9F. My least significant 4 is all 1's. We just saw that that's equal to F. My most significant 4, 8, 
plus 1 gives us a result of 9. Tough one to do really quickly because both of these are numbers greater than 9, so we need to convert to the hexadecimal letter. 1010, 8 plus 2 is decimal 10, and then 10 matches with hex A. On the left side, 8 plus 2 plus 1 is decimal 11, and we convert that into hex B. And the result here is CE for all the archaeologists out there. That does not mean common era this time. How do we get E? 8 plus 4 plus 2 gives me 14. What is 14 in hex? Well, 15 is F, so 1 less than that must be E. So we write E there. And then 8 plus 4 is 12 in decimal. I know that 10 is A, 11 is B, so 12 is written as a C. Okay, now we are going to go from hexadecimal into binary. The result here would be the same as if I asked you to convert decimal 5 into binary. Remember, hexadecimal and decimal look the same on numbers less than 10. So 5 is equal to 4 plus 1, and the other weights that aren't being added would be 8 and 2 in that binary number. The answer here is 1101. D is equal to decimal 13, and the weights being added here are 8 plus 4 plus 1. The answer here is 1011, A equals 10, B equals decimal 11, and so we would need to figure out, okay, which of our component weights will get us to 11? Definitely need an 8, so it's a big number, but then 8 plus 4 is too large, so we are not going to include a weight of 4. 8 plus 2 gets us up to 10, 8 plus 2 plus 1 gets us up to decimal 11. I want to remember here that converting between hexadecimal and binary is super convenient because it's always going to go one hex digit connects with four binary bits. It's different than decimal uh, because decimal is a base 10 system Sometimes one decimal digit means two bits. Sometimes it means four bits are necessary, but hexadecimal into binary, it's always one to four. So I can just split this into two halves. D, as we just saw up here, is written as binary 1101. Five, as we saw up here, is binary 0101. Now this still is one continuous string of bits. That is a solid 8-bit number. It's just convenient for us to interpret it with a space in between to try to wrap our human minds around it. Next one. Okay, again, one hex digit into four bits. Zero is the easiest. It's just going to be four consecutive binary zeros. And then C, okay, C is equal to decimal 12. And 12 you get by adding 8 plus 4, thus those two ones there. And now for one last bad problem. And there is our binary result. It doesn't matter how many hex digits I use, each one will split into four bits. So here I have three groups of four bits, or three nibbles, you might call them. So D, as we saw before, is 1101. A is equal to decimal 10. So we have 8 plus 2 there. 
and then B is equal to uh, decimal 11 or binary 1, 0, 1, 1.